What I want to show you in this video is that Uniswap B3 time weighted average price is equal to the geometric mean, which you can see over here. Now it's a little bit difficult to understand what this formula is doing. So I'll also give you an example of how this geometric mean behaves. And hopefully that will provide you with some intuitive understanding of this geometric mean. First, let's review how Uniswap B3 computes its time weighted average price. We'll say that TI is equal to tick at I second. Now recall that a tick is equal to one of these. So 1.0001 raised to the power of tick will give us the price. To get the average tick from time 0 to n, you will sum up all of the ticks from i equals 0 all the way up to n minus 1, and then divide it by the time interval n. This will give us back the tick average. Once we have the tick average, we can compute the price average, and we do that by taking 1.0001 raised to the power of tick average. Now the equation to compute the tick average that you see over here is slightly different from what I showed you in the previous video. In the previous video, we multiplied this tick average by the duration that the tick lasted. But for this example, we'll simplify the equation by saying that each ti lasts for one second. So the duration that should be over here is one. One multiplied by the tick is equal to the tick itself. So we can omit the duration. The graph of this might look something like this. At t equals zero, we have tick zero. At one second, we have tick one. And at two seconds, we have tick two. And at three seconds, we have tick three. Notice that tick two and tick three are the same. From time two seconds all the way up to four seconds, the tick is the same. But here, since we're adding each tick at each second, we say tick two at second two is t to the two, and the tick at three seconds is equal to t three. We do this all the way up to t to the n, but we only add up from t to the zero to t to the n minus one and not t to the n. The amount of seconds from zero to n minus one is n, so that is the n that you see over here. So this is how you compute the tick average and the price average. Let's now take a look at how this price average is the geometric mean. We will start off with the price average. This is equal to 1.0001 raised to the average tick. This is equal to 1.0001 raised to the average tick, which is the summation of ticks divided by the duration. Let's expand this expression further. Since we're dealing with exponents, we can apply some simple algebra to simplify this equation. If some base is raised to the x plus y, then this is equal to the base raised to the x multiplied by the base raised to the y. And the other algebraic formula that we will use is if a base is raised to the x divided by y, then this is equal to the base raised to the x and then raise it to the 1 over y. Using this formula and expanding this equation, we get that this is equal to 1.0001 raised to the first tick, t0, times 1.0001 raised to the second tick, t1, times 1.0001 raised to tick2, and so on, all the way up to tick of n minus 1. We take this whole equation and raise it to the 1 over n. Raising a number to 1 over n is simply taking the nth root. So we can write this equation as the nth root of 1.0001 raised to the tick 0, 1.0001 raised to the tick 1, and so on, all the way up to tick n minus 1. Where have we seen this equation before? Where we multiply n items and then take the nth root. Well, this is the geometric mean. Now looking at this equation, it's hard to see how this equation turns out to be the price average. So what I'm going to do is rearrange this equation so that you can see how this geometric mean is the average price. So first we'll name some variables and this will make the equation easier to read. We'll say that P0 is a price at 0 second, so this will be 1.0001 raised to the tick 0. Price 1 is equal to 1.0001 raised to the tick 1, and so on, all the way up to price of n minus 1. This will be 1.0001 raised to the tick to the n minus 1. Next, we'll write this equation above using these variables that we just defined. So this equation will be equal to the nth root of p0 multiplied by p1 multiplied by p2, and so on up to p to the n minus 1. Now we can rewrite this equation by multiplying each term by p0 and then dividing it by p0. Multiplying each term by p0 
and then dividing it by p0, that is equal to 1. So this equation is equal to this equation. We're multiplying p1 by p0, and then dividing it by p0. We're multiplying p2 by p0 again, and then dividing it by p0. We repeat this process all the way up to p to the n minus 1. Now let's count how many p0s we multiplied. For p0, we have one p0. Next to p1, we have another one. So now the number of p0 is equal to 2. Next to p2, we have another p0. So now the total amount of p0 is equal to 3. And we continue this process, and we can count that there are n p0s in total. We are multiplying n p0s here, and then taking the nth root, so we can pull out the p0, which you see over here. And the equation we get is p0 multiplied by taking the nth root of p1 divided by p0, p2 divided by p0, and so on to p to the n minus 1. So what can we say about this equation? How can we interpret this? Let's start with the easy one. What is p0? Well, p0 is by definition the price at time 0. How about each of these ratio? For example, what does p2 divided by p0 mean? Well, we can interpret this as price change from p0 to p2. For example, let's say that p0 is 3000 and p2 is 3300. 3300 divided by 3000 will give us back 1.1. So in that case, price change from p0 to p2 will be 1.1. So what we're doing here inside the amp root is we're multiplying each price change from p0 and then taking its geometric mean. So this whole equation, what it's doing is multiplying the first price, p0, by the geometric mean of the price changes from p0, which you see inside the green box. Let me give you a simple example of how this equation behaves. Let's say that p1, p2, p3, and all the way up to p to the n minus 1 are very close to p1. If we were to compute the average price, then we expect this average price to be something close to p1, since most of the terms are very close to p1. Let's see if this assumption is true. By definition, the price average is equal to p0 multiplied by the nth root of p1 divided by p0, p2 divided by p0, and all the way up to p to the n minus 1. This is the formula that we derived over here. Now, since all of these terms, p1, p2, all the way up to p to the n minus 1, is very close to p1, so we can reason over here that each of these terms is close to p1. We'll replace each of these terms with p1, and we get this equation over here on the right. p0 multiplied by the nth root of p1 divided by p0, multiplied by p1 divided by p0, and we do this all the way up to the n minus 1 term. This equation should be close to the price average since all of the prices are close to p1. We just replaced all of these terms with p1. Since there are n minus 1 p to the 1 divided by p to the 0, we can simplify this equation and we get p0 multiplied by p1 divided by p0 raised to the n minus 1 over n. Over here, there are n minus 1 p1 divided by p0, so that's the n minus 1 you see over here. And since we're taking the nth root over here, here you're seeing n at the bottom. Now, if n is a very large number, then n minus 1 over n is very close to 1. So this expression over here is close to p0 multiplied by p1 divided by p0. The p0s cancels out, and we get that this equation is equal to p1. In other words, when all of the prices are close to P1, then the price average is also close to P1. And that validates our guess that when all of the prices are close to one of them, we'll say P1, then the price average is also close to P1.